As an artist, when you're posting content to TikTok, you might have hit the 200 view curse, which is no matter what you do, you can't seem to get your content past around about 200 views. It might be 250, might be 220, might be 279. But for some reason, no matter what you do, you can't seem to break through that ceiling. Well, there are tips and tricks that you can do to make sure that you can push past it. And if you do it well, that 200 could potentially be 200,000. Now, we live in a social media ADD world, attention deficit disorder, which means we start getting bored after around two seconds. So when you're putting your content out, it needs to factor that in and make sure that people aren't getting bored every couple of seconds, whether that's text, whether it's colors, whether it's emojis, whether it's cutting in or out on a screen. All of these things make a huge difference. Now, if we can keep people watching and push the average view duration from two to three seconds to maybe five or six seconds, that could be the difference between tens of thousands of views. So today I've teamed up with the lovely people at CapCut to bring you an easy to use tutorial to improve your content in just five minutes. Okay, so we're in the CapCut desktop app starting a project. Here's a blank one that we prepared earlier. So going over to our project settings, you can see that CapCut offers a number of resolutions depending on the device that you're editing the content for. Now this example is for a phone. So we're gonna set a nine by 16 portrait aspect ratio. We're then gonna change the color space to Rec 709 as this is traditionally used on most devices. So the project is now set up. Uh, and now we're gonna go over to the import window. We're gonna locate our clip and the music trap and bring them into the project. Now we're using a clip that I shot with a good friend of mine called Jordan Harvey. So firstly, we're gonna add the clip to the timeline. We're gonna roughly trim the clip to the start of the performance and the end. CapCut's editing tools are very intuitive and easy to use. As you can see, we've removed everything before the performance. And we'll do the same at the end. Leaving only the sections we wanna work with. So we're then gonna go up into our video settings in the top right. Firstly, we have position and size. We're able to scale the clip and change the position of it to make sure the artist is exactly where we'd like them to be in the frame. And then CapCut has a number of advanced features, including inbuilt video stabilization. We're going to choose the most stable option to remove any unwanted camera shake. Moving across to the audio tab, you can then see there's a noise reduction option, which will remove any distracting background noise. Very helpful. And then along to the adjustment tab for another powerful feature. Uh, auto adjust, the color settings will automatically boost the lights and the colors. The adjustment can be dialed up and down to get to closer to look the way that you want to achieve. Um, the optional skin tone protection setting, uh, it, that ensures that skin tones remain natural despite color adjustments that we might make. And then we have the more familiar color tools that you may be used to from different video editing platforms. Uh, now this includes basic adjustments such as brightness, contrast, highlights, uh, shadows so we can really aim for a look that will help to grab attention and stop that scroll we also want to sharpen the image to make the subject really stand out and then we can just adjust uh, adjust the temperature hue and the saturation to change the warmth and the tint of the image now this will enable us to really make that image pop so as you can see, we've got the pink sky to stop that scroll and grab the viewer's attention. We just need to be careful with the skin tone. So we've got CapCut skin tone protection on. Now that just uh, makes sure everything looks really natural. Then there's also a lot more advanced color features such as HSL, curves and color wheels for those that are accustomed to working with more advanced color tools. Now the next step in the process is laying the music track underneath. So we're having a performance that sounds great. And before we do this, we're just going to remove that awkward gap between Jordan talking and the track starting. So lift that up and then we are going to lay the track on the timeline. Now CapCut has useful audio sync features. Uh, and as you can see here, that is auto syncing uh, the track to the video for us. 
So we're just trimming that to length. And then we're going to move that back along next to the intro. So the intro is the artist, Jordan, telling us his story. He's adding some context, and this is super important to stop the scroll. But we need to be able to hear him over the music. So as you can see, using CapCut's keyframe tools, which we can find in the top right, taking the level of the audio track down. And then we're going to boost that up as the track starts, as he starts to sing. At the same time, we're pulling down the level of the recording where he's singing along. So we have a nice clean master underneath the, the actual track. And then it's quite nice to add a transition between the two clips. CapCut's got hundreds of different built-in transitions and effects. And we are going to use a nice whoosh between, uh, between it. This, this takes us straight to the track, so we can adjust the length of that to suit. Then we're just going to keep the viewer engaged. We're going to add a slight push, a gradual zoom very gently. Now, this is using some keyframes, of course. You can add more movement if you desire. CapCut's tools are really, really easy to use. So everything we're doing in this process is to keep the viewer engaged. And an easy way to do this is to add captions to your video. So CapCut has got a built-in auto caption method. I think it's auto lyrics on the actual phone app and you can see it's generated the captions just for us. So you can go through these and then it has a number of different text styles to choose from. We're cycling through some of these now. You can customize the text as much as you need to. You can change the colors, you can change the fonts, you can increase the size of the text, you can change the position. You can really make this your own. And then after this, the final thing to do is to check your video for copyright. So this can be found in audio in the top left. It will run a check to analyze your audio. And as you can see, when this loads, Jordan's song is in fact a copyrighted track as expected. Now I'm not signed in as Jordan, which is why it's flagging for copyright. But if you are the artist and you're signed into your artist account, you shouldn't have any issues. And then we come to the final steps, which is to export our content. Now we've clicked on the blue export button in the top right. We need to name our file, select the export destination, select the file type we want, an MP4 file, as it will retain the video quality while being small enough to post on socials. And then we hit export. Now this will take a minute. And then voila, our export is finished and we have our file. And this can be published from within CapCut directly straight to TikTok, or you can upload it your, yourself via your phone. So as you can see, using CapCut and some easy to use hacks, you can really push the average view duration, therefore pushing up your views and going past that 200 ceiling. We do this all day, every day, and it makes a huge difference difference. So what are you waiting for? If you want to go and check out CapCut, do it. Also, the links are in the description. Big thanks to CapCut. I only said yes to this because we genuinely do use this and I genuinely do think this is a good thing for you guys. So good luck. Do me a favor, hit the like, hit the subscribe. And I'll see you next time.